A new mid-size EV SUV is coming up with the Genesis GV70 EV. This vehicle here is available with combustion engine, both petrol and diesel, but now there is the electric version. And you can see it here with the closed grille, but isn't this dot structure? And with Thomas and Autogefühl for you, we'll tell you all about you need to know with this vehicle, including the driving part. Burgundy is this very interesting color here for today. We also have some other color choices, for example, a red one or a matte green, military style, or my favorite, the matte gray. That looks best, I think. Other than that here, the closed grill, you can see the, ta uh, the tail lamps. That's the other side, right? The front lamps here, very slim. Daytime running light integration, that looks very modern, so quite modern styling in the front. Do you like it? For me, the 72 or 186 inches is the length here of the Genesis GV70. The EV version is no different. So from the exterior, you cannot differentiate it from the side profile. The direct competitor would, for example, be a Mercedes GLC, but that's not available electric yet. Well, here, 20 inch wheels mounted for today. And we can see that we have the chrome frames around the windows, has an elegant styling and a very interesting design line right here. Suspension-wise, the EV version directly comes with the otherwise optional ECS, that's the adaptive dampers, and here also in the preview function, so it scans the road ahead. And it sometimes does beeping sounds. <laughs> really clean design here also in the rear with these tail lamps that are very horizontally drawn and very slim. And did you know that this is also a performance SUV? It has all-wheel drive, one electric motor in the rear, one in the front, 4.2 seconds is the acceleration figure to one kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. Very impressive. And also for efficiency, they both use on the rear and the front axle a permanent synchronous motor. And that means they are more efficient. But usually they are always running even if you're rolling. But they can decouple the front electric motor when rolling. So there's then less resistance. And then usually when you're just like running rather straight, just the rear electric motor is active. So it is predominantly then a rear wheel driven car and then front electric motor when you really need it. The top speed is 235 kilometers an hour or 146 miles an hour. So they also thought about the German Autobahn. <laughs> yeah, we Germans need the high speed, you know. So, um, and we'll test the German Autobahn, of course, with this one here today. Something that the Genesis logo can be mistaken for a Bentley logo or vice versa. What's your opinion on that? Tell me in the comments. And there is indeed here a small frunk. Oh, ain't that cute? Well, at least you do have one. Would that be a relevant factor when buying an EV? Tell me in the comments that as well. And talking about the engines in general, about the general vehicle here, general vehicle. Well, this is the EV version, 77 kilowatt hours net battery. That will bring us a range more or less four kilometers or 250 miles, maybe a little bit more. We'll see about that later. It also features a heat pump, so you don't have so much range losses in winter times. Other than that, the general platform here of the vehicle offers a petrol engine 2.5 or in the US also a 3.5 liter V6 and also a 2.2 liter diesel. Charging port is here hidden in the front. That looks cool, right? And it has an 800 volt architecture. That means charging from 10 to 80% state of charge when you have a proper DC charging station in less than 20 minutes. And this is indeed segment leading. And turning indicator check. That looks quite fancy, doesn't it? And just in the rear, it's not that spectacular. The reason here they keep it in the lower part is that when the hatch is open, you can still see it. That's also mandatory or by, by law, actually. By the way, we also caught a pink vehicle color. It's <laughs> also interesting, doesn't it? This is the key fob and it also features the remote parking feature and that means when you close you have to close it then have this hold button then you can well I almost ran over Michelle's foot now that was close <laughs> so um, let's say you have a narrow parking lot or something then you can remotely park this car in and out and hey stop stop I have to use the force <laughs> Sorry, I had to go for this one. <laughs> Door closing sound. It's actually quite good. Have heard better ones, but definitely, definitely heard worse ones. What's cool here, the door, look at that. It really continues all the way to the lower area. 
that means yeah you can easily scratch your ground when it's you know when there's like a bump here or something but the good thing is that the whole area here in the entry area there it always stays clean and here it already starts what i love about this vehicle here real controls this is the real deal you have real buttons and they are from good build quality i really love that also how the contrast stitches are aligned here and so on that makes a very good impression and you can also see it here at the steering wheel you have real controls also the jog here for the volume for example and it looks premium it feels premium at the same time you offer a classic user interface because we as humans we need feedback and we need to touch things yeah i literally mean that <laughs> and yeah that's the cool thing and it shows you can make a modern vehicle but still keep a classic and good user interface seats they look quite comfortable i'll soon test them however one strange thing here with the ev version you have some fabric in the head restraint but main part is animal skin and for the petrol engines you can get leatherette seats for example well why not here maybe at the later stage i don't know seating position here with 189 or six foot two there is still some headroom left and there's a nice comfort feature here. When I turn on the ignition, steering wheel comes down, seat goes forward and this is then the final seating position. And yeah, it's really disappointing that especially for the EV version, they only sell a top trim and then with animal skin seat, that doesn't make sense at all. Um, yeah, but let's see if that only accounts for Europe. We'll have to see about that. Seating position itself from the ergonomics is actually quite decent. You have a nice comfortable seating position and once again, the quality how you know everything is thought out and planned that makes a very good first impression as well interior overview really clean here from the surfaces and so on and here wrapped tightly 14.9 inch screen really horizontal widescreen format well of best with this vehicle is that they once again show it looks modern it looks clean yet at the same time we have a real climate dial which you can feel and turn and that's the way to go. I think this is actually a good way they found. Yes, you also have the screen here, for example, to activate the seat, uh, the, the steering wheel heating, for example, or the seat heating right here. So they don't have knobs for everything, but for example, here for that, or at the steering wheel, I've shown that to you as well. And also some hotkeys that you can quickly access the map, for example. Um, it's important, by the way, in a way that you still use the car internal GPS because when you use that one you can have preheating for the battery for fast charging that won't be possible with Google Maps or Apple CarPlay then here in the lower part we have also this control unit where you can control the infotainment system while driving it's also a good function to have driving mode selection soon tell you more about that another real volume jog and this everything resonates very well with that quality and this is in the drive mode selector drive reverse and neutral if you ever need that and then here for the parking and also when you open these um things here like here oh, that it feels so smooth when you open that i love these details two USB-A chargers. You can also fit a second phone there. Also, inductive charging is in the front there. But for the Apple CarPlay and Auto, you need a cable connection. Cup holders are adaptive and also keep the bottles very tight. This Genesis water, the new Genesis water. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, um, yeah, that works very well. And then we have this middle console armrest. And let's see, it's, yeah, it's quite long, therefore it does shake a little bit. Underneath, however, it's nice that we also have this felt covering here and more space there. It's really dark, but there is a lot of space. Infotainment system. What I really like is that I can control it while driving also from below with a turning knob and the screen stays clean, actually. You can, however, use the touch function as well. That is actually possible. Then what I want to show you is, is a new feature, first time for a Genesis vehicle. It has the terrain mode. And when I use the driving mode selector and put it in there, so you can have a snow mode for example so the power on the electric motors is then reduced and they have really nice visualizations for that one right that one looks cool. and oh and they also kept the burgundy color then here in this case for the vehicle oh we're going for sand so that's actually um, quite cool nice to have the car internal map is well not the coolest one not the most modern one as I said, the advantage is that here then you have a preconditioning of the battery when you pick a charging station in there. Other than that, 
you would go for the Apple CarPlay Android Auto, it has a nice integration right there. And then, of course, here use the Google Maps and so on. The two instruments are clear to read. The only thing that I think is missing in the middle part is a big digital speedometer, so that could be better in when you switch through the driving modes. The instruments also change in the sports mode, also the side bolts of the seat change, by the way. So that looks actually quite fancy. And here, once again, you can also select the terrain modes. I do that with the button in the middle console. Also interesting is here that lower right part. So there I can actually change the recuperation mode with the shifting pedals at the steering wheel. And then I can go for a maximum recuperation. Maybe I have to start the, start the engine for that. So um, there we go. So um, there we go. Yeah, and it's always beeping everything, you know, so you can have maximum recuperation or then lower it. And when you press and hold them, look again at the lower right, you switch from the auto mode to the normal mode, and that is actually also affecting the recuperation. There's also a head-up display available. Rear seating area, what comes to my mind visually is here, contrasting seat belts. That looks really fancy, doesn't it? Maybe not for everyone's liking, but yeah, I do like it. Isofix at the outside seats each. Let's soon check the legroom, but here the door. Also in the rear, we have some soft touch, so good build quality. And also the lower part there, the door sill is really low there at the doors. So you don't make your, you know, lower trousers dirty here at the entry. So this is all staying clean. Legroom, when I'm driving here as a tall driver, um, it works. It's not abundant, actually. You cannot change the back part here. Here it works very well with the recess. But when a tall driver is driving, not too much legroom. Headroom, however, is actually totally fine. Then, although it is EV, it is also a platform sharing with the ICE models. Therefore, there is yeah, like this, this, this small step here in the middle part, but it's more or less okay. So, in the middle position, you can sit, but it gets close with the legs. Yeah, maybe not the most comfortable one, but it works for shorter trips, for example. There's also always a nice feature here that you can move the passenger seat from here, the so-called gentleman's function. <laughs> yeah, you know why. Um, but that also helps when, for example, when you're sitting here in the rear and want to control something. In the middle part here, you can slide down the couples. They're not adaptive at all, though, so not that helpful then in this case. But overall, a decent rear area. Oh, and not to forget, this lever here changes the back part of the seat. So then you can make this one a little bit steeper. Well, that's maybe too steep or more backward but yeah i think the backward position in this case is the best choice you would put like this when you need more trunk also porsche macan style opening here for the trunk otherwise there's also this cool function that when you access the vehicle with the key in your pocket you just stand still and then it opens automatically after a few seconds here then the trunk space you don't lose too much here in the ev version width is a meter of 40 inches the length is a little bit less than a meter of 40 inches so a little bit missing right here and the total height here is about 72 centimeters or 28 inches um well it could be higher underneath the cover here this is you know like a free cover without rails um, but you have more space here in the wheel arches there the trunk gets a little bit wider but you can see here when you use this one here it's not high enough for you to well this yeah so not ideal i would like a little bit more depth underneath this cover here you can put smaller things in here but for a charging cable i think that won't even work what's interesting that you can oh that's that's nice here that you have this hear that look click and then it's secured and then you can fold the seats and so put in the head restraint first here so holding the seats like this and they fold directly properly so genesis suggestion for the charging cable is this box it is really properly secured here i mean it's like i can't even put it up without damaging the trunk so you have to be really certain where to put it so it will stay in that place most of the time and then it's here underneath welcome to thomas's driving lounge in the genesis gv70 ev and the cool thing they paid attention to here is sound design active sound design off is just silent, as you might know it from other EVs. Then you can go minimized, normal, or enhanced, like how strong it is actually pronounced. And ooh, 
I'm not. I, I put it to enhance that you can really hear that, and then by these you can actually pick what you want to have. And S engine is provides a sporty engine sound for electric vehicles. So this is then basically emulating an interesting emulating a combustion engine. And let's listen to that. Like, then there is E motor, provides natural electric motor sound for electric vehicles. Natural electric motor sound. So more like, and then there is futuristic, provides a futuristic driving sound for electric vehicles. Okay, that's more like engage. So what would you prefer? All silent? A more futuristic sound, a subtle sound, or more like a growling engine-like sound. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I would like when there is a sound that kind of gives you back a natural feeling of something that is alive in a way, you know? So I like a sound when it sounds like growling and you can like really feel it in a way, you know? But that's what I'm always talking about. Why can't you just pick like, hey, today I'm feeling like V8, today I'm feeling like inline six cylinder or whatever, and maybe today I will not have sound off. So, but this already comes close to that. So I think it's uh, actually a, a nice idea. So um, it would be cool if we could do a live vote, which one we, um, we leave now here in our review. And it's by the way cool when I control something like that, I don't have to like reach over here, but I can do it here with the, with the turning knob. So maybe we leave it to normal and put it to the S engine so we don't have it that much, but just a little bit, you know, let's, let's try it with that one, actually. So I follow the Apple CarPlay Google Maps then here for our guidance today. We can now see something of the ambient lighting here, for example, around this area, also inside of the doors a little bit, actually quite cool. I also um, put up the, the brightness for that. Steering feel is actually quite decent. So it, let's see how it changes throughout the driving modes. You have to reach down here when I go, for example, to the sport mode. Is it stiffer? Yeah, yeah. So in the sport mode, we have a little bit more resistance. That's actually a quite nice feeling. Also the bolsters um, come a little bit closer to you. You have to stick quite a lot. I would say it is um, most comparable to a Mercedes driving feeling from the steering. Um, whereas the Audi ones are, for example, more progressive. And the BMW, mm, they are the X3 would be the comparing model to that, is also a little bit sporty in the, in, the, in the feeling, I would say. As for the driving modes, in the sport mode, you have more response from the throttle. You also have a boost mode function here. For 10 seconds, you have then a maximum boost for this vehicle here. You can activate it at the steering wheel. And we'll also try that out very soon when we go to the German Autobahn. First, here's some cruising, therefore we can also leave it then in the comfort mode. It's actually quite silent here. We'll also test that at a higher speed later. The adaptive suspension does a good job. So it is relatively sporty from the setup, I would say. We also have 20 inch wheels mounted. That also accounts for this sporty driving feeling. But indeed, it feels very sophisticated here. So the combustion engines already, you know, the, these versions there from the GV70 already told us that it's a very, very good competitor here in the mid-size premium SUV segment. So it's definitely on par with, you know, BMW X3, Mercedes GLC, Audi Q5, and all of these have their specialties in some certain areas. And to me here, the cool thing is really that they offer us a classic user interface so i can really just easily change the temperature while driving and especially mercedes is going away from that uh, bmw also with the new os8 then as well audi is a little bit more classic than more traditional than in, in this case yeah then brake feel because it's always the thing with electric vehicles do you still have a proper brake feeling but so far satisfied with that it's actually a quite a uh, quick response, and I already talked, um, talked about the recuperation modes. 
You can leave it, for example, at level two, then you have some notable recuperation already, but it's maybe not too much, like G falls on the passengers, and you can also go with the I pedal, maximum recuperation, then you really have one pedal driving. So I leave the foot of the throttle, and there's strong recuperation. So you can do that, it really depends on what you want. And then, of course, when you use the brakes, also the regenerative braking is being activated. I talked earlier about efficiency gains by decoupling or using clutch on the front electric motor. As soon as you need more regeneration, then the motor is also you know, being engaged once again. For example, when you leave the foot off the throttle, then there's some recuperation at the rear axle but then you have more recuperation needed and then the front one is also being activated once again. Uh, at the end of the test drive, we'll do like a longer loop now. We'll also talk about the final real world energy consumption here. Um, if we know the estimations of this vehicle of the EV range, then are also being confirmed. Let's now hit the motorway, push the throttle. Yeah, we're having the turning indicator be uh, uh, beat. <laughs> yeah, that's what Michelle and I do when we are on driving events, yeah, nice. <laughs> so let's put it to the sport mode and hit the German Autobahn. Yeah, there we are with the sport mode. I also have this enhanced sound now. We can have something of the active sound design. And what about the acceleration of this one? So I'll start at 40 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out. Let's go. <laughs> 130 and we're already at the back of that vehicle here, GLA. Wow, that was 40 to 130 and now when we're already at speed, at 110, let's go. Woo! 150, 170, that is super quick and wow, also really high speed stuff. 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour and now hard on the brakes full recuperation plus using the real brakes and good braking performance indeed wow that is good agility like that and also lane changes here that's nice adaptive suspension set on the sport here note then here in the sports no uh, sp sp sports mode sports a sports note in the sports mode right <laughs> so here another lane change also i can see here there's another blind spot um, functionality when I have the right turn indicator as the camera on the right side at the mirrors and left side turning indicator the left camera is also a very nice feature definitely yeah that's really nice here and, and I mean there's good noise insulation also at higher speeds the car feels really very well in control comparing the combustion engine model here with the electric one here we have the low center of gravity so that helps actually in agile driving just when we are in tight corners of course the car is pushing a little bit more but the driving feeling is definitely comparable both the combustion engine and this one here very good in the driving indeed i mean in the us it's especially attractive to pick the 3.5 liter v6 of course for this engine as well you know but it depends on the charging infrastructure it's really just a pity. I mean, this EV here drives so well, but the so far offering of animal skin only in a modern electric vehicle, it's, that's actually almost, that is actually a deal breaker, you know? So I really hope they will have some markets uh, worldwide where they also offer these leatherette seats or well, whatever, um, also for the EV model. Um, yeah, we can just push them for that, for a little bit more sustainability. But driving feeling wise and comfort, is really in, in every respect here a very very good driving feeling and experience the question is just what about the agile handling when it gets you know when it gets a little bit tighter that's where we're heading now now and here we go more agile cornering once again a good steering feel indeed and the suspension is doing a good job it's also once again compare the comfort mode versus the sport mode you're already in comfort mode you have Quite good feedback from the car, so that feels quite natural. So let's go to the sports mode. When there are some bumps in the road, by the way, it does get more bumpy basically from the feeling when you have the sport mode on. So 
then you would rather pick the comfort mode. But of course, for mining corners, then the sport suspension is more fun here. That's what I mean. So when the road has some damage, then it gets less comfortable. So once again, the difference between the ICE and the EV, they are really comparable cars. Um, it is some kind of a trade-off indeed. You have more weight, but then the center of gravity is lower. <sighs> Which one is more fun? Yeah, it's here it's really a tough question. We have some vehicles where the EV is actually even more fun to drive. Um, here I'm not exactly certain. As for the seating comfort here, when we have been driving a little bit longer, by the way, um, yeah, I feel that the seats are fine from the ergonomics, but oh, it looks really cool with the fork here. Um, but they're not segment leading. For example, the new perforated Sensatec seats in the BMW X3 are to me uh, more comfortable. And also the Volvo seats are great in the ergonomics. The Volvo XC60 would also be a competitor which has better ergonomics in the, in the seats. You know, when we have this longer band and accelerate out, the steering gets a little bit light then when accelerating out. Still, I have a little bit more punch from that rear electric motor, but yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun and always very spontaneous throttle input. I mean, you can easily forget that this is also a performance SUV, you know, like with just over four seconds here in the acceleration figure, you know, that used, used to be high powered six cylinder or even eight cylinder engines in these mid-size SUVs. Wow, beautiful view now over the Frankfurt area. German driving here today around the this the um the Taunus here, the mountain region close to Frankfurt. Now here recuperation and because we went uphill first and now all the way downhill and this would be another use case for example when I don't want to have my foot on the brake all the time. I just increase the recuperation level but it does offer strong recuperation. So for going downhill here, the first recuperation level is already enough, actually. This adaptive recuperation, by the way, when you press and hold the pedal, then it also adapts depending on if there's a car in front of you. Oh, there's another um, in this GV70. You know, the colleague is filming that. So let's go back to the comfort mode because it gets a little bit bumpy here from that sporty suspension. So this adaptive recuperation, when the car is in front of you, then there is recuperation. When there's no one in front of you, the car is rolling. So that would also be an idea. And yeah, meanwhile, I think it's good when you can choose these modes and then you can just pick the driving mode where are you most comfortable with. And also here, depending on how far we're going down, you know, and then I can also, I'm, I'm not doing anything with my feet at this moment. So you can just control it if you want to have it a little bit stronger or not. And of course, the energy consumption after this motorway, high speed driving and also going uphill went up quite a lot. You know, I do a stronger recuperation now with the left pedal. But when we're going downhill, we will gain back a lot of energy. And then we can tell you more about the final real world EV driving range for today. And here we go, real world range. So on our test loop, we had topography changes, but also high speed motorway driving here on the German Autobahn that of course put the consumption a little bit higher than usual. But it's also a realistic thing, at least in Germany. <laughs> and then we end up at 23 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That is some 35 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. In this case, then only a range of 330 kilometers or 200 miles, also with somewhat cold temperatures, not too cold though. If we would leave out the high-speed motorway driving, we would more come close to some 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or some 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And that would bring us closer to a 400 kilometers or 250 miles range. That is the same also when you have like an Ionic 5 or the Genesis GV60 um, or the Kia EV6. Only that this one here, because it's a little bit bigger, has you know some range disadvantages. So it is not the range king more king in the quick recharging if you have the according charging station. If then the ICE model, the petrol engine is more relevant for to you, we have here the GV70 review of that for you, or a direct competitor would be the BMW iX3.